I want to welcome you to another episode of the Darren Sargent Show. I am so glad you joined us in this episode today. We are going to ask another question. What do you think? What do you think? Right here on the Darren Sargent Show. But before we get started, I just want to tell everyone thank you, thank you, thank you for those that have subscribed to the new YouTube channel. It is at youtube.com forward slash at Darren Sargent Leadership. If you've not checked that out yet, this episode today, you're probably going to want to because I'm going to do a little something. You'll, you'll, you'll get it when you see it. But I want you to join us there at youtube.com forward slash at Darren Sargent Leadership. Also, we are dropping our second episode of Marriage Matters podcast with my wife and myself. Looking forward to that. That'll be dropping this week. So make sure you subscribe. All of that will be in the show notes as well as in the descriptions on YouTube. All right, here we go. In this episode, we are asking a question. What do you think? Thanks for joining. Let's get started right here on the Darren Sargent Show, the podcast where you get life advice from a single-handed perspective. You get it. Here we go. I love the gospel of Mark because Mark was a young man of action. And he starts out his gospel just kind of like straight out of the chute. I mean, he's not waiting for a genealogy. He's not trying to uh, give us an historical account. He is just starting with the ministry of Jesus. And in chapter two, we are introduced to a time Jesus' ministry has taken off. People are coming out in droves and four men get their buddy who is sick of the palsy, and they bring him to Jesus. Now, we know the story. If you don't, let me just tell it to you. It's in Mark chapter 2. They can't get into the house because of the press, not not the paparazzi, but the press, the, the amount of people that are there. And so what they do is they tear the roof off. Their mindset is so interesting to me. And in this episode, we're going to dig around in the thinking category, in the thought life, because I think there's some things here that we could unpack and we could really apply to our lives. We all have a choice in how we think. We can wake up thinking that everything's great, or we can wake up thinking the uh, the sky is going to fall on us at any moment. It's really your choice. It's my choice on how I think. Now, I have met people as well as probably everyone listening to this or watching this have, who never seem to conquer this area of their lives. It's as if the minute they wake up, they gargle acid. Nothing good comes out of their mouth because they have nothing good going on in their thinking. Proverbs 23, verse 7 says this, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. That, that's a powerful verse of Scripture. And it leads me to a few things that I just want to begin this podcast with. Number one, everything begins with a thought. Rolf, 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 Ralph Waldo Emerson said, life consists of what a man is thinking about all day. Wow. Here's another point of what I want to make. What we think determines who we are and who we are determines what we do. John Locke said it this way, the actions of men are the best interpreters of their thoughts. How you act is usually how you're thinking. Number three, our thoughts determine our destiny, and our destiny determines our legacy. James Allen, the author, said, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. You will be tomorrow where your thoughts take you. Now, I'll be honest with you, I, I let me just talk about me. I, I'm trying to learn how to think more clearly and more effectively. I want to see the bright side. I would like to believe the glass is half full instead of half empty. Now, I believe most of us have been molded by either our upbringing or our influence of others. 
I've watched people who thought different than what they do all because they got attached to someone who cannot seem to think correctly. Influence matters. So we probably need to watch who we associate ourselves with. I'll never forget one time I pulled into a gas station to get some gas, and apparently, unbeknown to me, there must have been a one-arm convention in town because the guy on the other side of the pump where I was pumping gas only had one hand, just like me. Of course, I was going to strike up a conversation, find out if we were related. I asked him if, you know, could, could you go to church with me this weekend? I could finally clap. I asked him if he had ever been to Sunday school and knew the Sunday school nursery rhyme. Here's the church and there's the steeple. Open up the door and see all the people. I I can only get four people in my church and I I could only get these four to show up. I'd really like you to join me because I'm desperate for revival. I was trying to find a connection point, but what I got was not what I was expecting. The dude was bitter. He started griping how nobody would help him with his disability, said that word. He must have said the word handicap at least five times. He was ugly. He was negative. He was bitter. He was a victim. Each one of us, I don't know why or when, I just, I quit talking because there was no sense. He he didn't like my jokes and didn't like me, so I just kind of gave up. But each one of us is a product of our environment that surrounds our lives. It is no accident that people who tend to be negative are often found in the same household. Two people can live in the same county, under the same law, with the same privileges, and yet turn out to be drastically different in their values, in their priorities, in their lifestyle, in their thinking. Why? Because their environment, especially at home, may have been drastically different from one to the other. Their thoughts reflected what they were given by their environment. Now, let's let's go to the Bible here. Let's look at the 12 spies as they come out of Egypt and they're going into the promised land to scout it out. Now, I would think that, let, let's just be on the conservative side. At least half of them, at least six of them would have said, you know, we can do this. But I'm curious about their upbringing. I wonder what kind of families they were raised in. What was being said around the table at supper time? Ah, we're never going to get anywhere. Moses has got us out here. This is ridiculous. Because only two of the 12 thought they could take the land. Even after they saw the clusters of grapes and the land that was flowing with milk and honey, they thought they could not conquer the land. Makes you wonder. Isn't it amazing how 12 men can look down from the mountain, same mountain, and see with the physical naked eye the same thing, yet with their mind's eye already come to a conclusion and a verdict about the outcome? Why is it that some people see potential and other people see problems? Why is it some people see opportunity and others see disaster? I'm convinced it's because we are a product of our environment. I remember one person in particular who seemed to wake up under the bed and and just didn't have the proper, they woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Every time I get around this individual, something's wrong, something bad has happened. It's a negative day. No one likes me. I'm just going to go in the backyard and eat worms. Now, I'm not talking to you today about just positive thinking. I, I guess what I'm talking about is the value of good thinking. There is value in good thinking. I want to be a good thinker. Not that I have to understand everything before I get involved in something or it all has to make sense before I'll go out and do something. If I wait for it to logically make sense sometimes, I will miss out on everything God is trying to do. Think about it with me. Joshua was told to walk around Jericho seven times, keep his mouth shut. It doesn't make sense to fight Goliath with a slingshot. It doesn't make sense for Naaman to dip seven times in the river for his healing from leprosy. It doesn't make sense for the widowed woman to collect vessels for oil. It absolutely is crazy to pour barrels of water on a sacrifice and then proclaim the God that answers by fire, let him be God. It's totally ridiculous for Gideon 
to only have 300 men to go out against the Midianites with just lamps, pitchers, and trumpets. But in God's kingdom, it works. It just works. I have learned in the kingdom of God, sometimes some things just don't make sense. It's how I think about it that helps. Benjamin Disraeli said this, nurture great thoughts, for you will never go higher than your thoughts. So let me ask a question here today. What one thing do all successful people have in common? What one thing separates those who go to the top from those who never seem to get there? I think the answer is good thinking. Now, I am convinced that those who embrace good thinking as a lifestyle understand the relationship between their level of thinking and their level of progress. They also realize that to change their lives, they've got to change their thinking. Someone once stated something. They said, your life today is a result of your thinking yesterday. Your life tomorrow, they continued to say, will be determined by what you think today. If you think you're cursed and you were created for failure, chances are you will be cursed and you will be destined for failure. If you think everything you touch falls apart, chances are everything you touch will fall apart. If you think everyone is out to get you and you're a constant disappointment, you are going to end up being a very miserable person and everyone around you is going to be miserable. I'm not hanging with those type of people. I don't like miserable people. I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, I am convinced now more than ever before that we have to be careful about what we think. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone that's listening, hear me, hear me, hear me. It is important what we think about. I'll give myself a hand clap. Well, not really. It is important what thoughts or ideas we entertain in the chambers of our mind. It is essential that we pay attention attention to what we allow to go into our minds. We've got to guard ourselves. We have to protect. We have to defend. We have to look after what we allow to come into our minds. I love what Peter said in 1 Peter 1.13, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That word gird is like taking a belt and tightening things up. In other words, I am locking down the borders and the gates of my mind. I, I'm securing them. I'm cinching things up. My grandfather used to say this all the time, and all of us have probably heard it, and I don't mind is the devil's playground. So that's why Paul would say to the Philippians, he said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, watch this, think on these things. One translation or paraphrase says it this way, and now, brothers, as I close this letter, let me say this one more thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine, good things in others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about it. That's a pretty powerful portion of Scripture. Fix your thoughts. Think on these things. Don't think on negative things. Don't think everyone's out to get you. Don't think that, you know, no one loves you and everybody is against you. Now, I've got three things that I want to challenge all of us that are listening to this podcast if, and, and if we will apply, if we will apply these three things to our lives, I think our days will be better. I think our lives will be better. I think our futures will be better. Number one, as a child of God, I need to learn to think on things that are edifying. Our world is filled with negative news right now. It's horrible. 
But as a child of God, I need to learn to think on things that are edifying. Number two, I need to think on things that are enriching. What will help me? What can I think about? What can I read? What can I do? And then finally, think on things that are inspirational. Now, it's spring when I'm recording this. It's We were into spring, and I need to do some time, some spring cleaning. I was out in the yard last night kind of cleaning things up. It's time for that. But I also probably need to do some spring cleaning in the chambers of my mind. I need to clean away every area of my mind that is shadowy or mysterious or not positive. I need to think on good things. Or better yet, I need to value good thinking. Paul would write to the Romans in chapter 12 and say, And so, dear brothers, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living sacrifice, holy, the kind that he can accept. When you think of what he has done for you, when you think, is this too much to ask? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but be a new and different person with a fresh, watch this, newness in all you do and think then you will learn from your own experience how his ways will really satisfy you. Now, if you're a King James person, I just read from the Living Bible, and it's a paraphrase, and it sounds a little different, but for those of you that that want the King James, I'll read it to you too, because it's just as powerful, if not more so. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I love verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, here it is, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I am persuaded that God made us to be conquerors, not to be conquered, that God made us to be victorious and not to be victims, and that begins with how we think. I, I, I don't believe for one minute God wants us groping around in the dark and trying to figure life out, nor does he want us to put on the mindset of this world with all of its negativity and wickedness. Paul said we've got to be transformed, which simply means we need to be altered or changed. This has been my prayer of late. I have be, I'll be honest with you. God, I want to be changed. I want to learn how to walk with you in a stronger relationship. I want to think more about your goodness and your power. I want my thinking to align with his word and his purposes and his will. I want his word to wash my mind of all negative thinking. And I have started praying. I said, God, I I am more interested in your nature than I am in your gifts. We often want the power of God, but we don't want the nature of God. We are to be conformed, the Bible says, into his image, his nature. I want to think as he thinks. I want to walk as he walks. I want to work as he works. In Mark chapter 2, there was something about the mindset of these men, these four men that brought their buddy to Jesus. In my opinion, I, I think they, they just felt like if they could get their friend into the presence of this miracle worker, he, he might receive a miracle. I, I don't think these men sat around trying to figure out what to do. I, I would like to think they just had a mindset of whatever we've got to do, let's do it because our buddy needs to get up off this mat. We're missing our small forward on the basketball team. I wonder what would happen in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our ministries, in our leadership, if we got the same mindset of these four men is that whatever it takes, we're going to get an answer. We're going to see something happen. They did not look at the obstacles and quit. They didn't get there and notice that there was a crowd and there was no way in. They, they, they didn't get there and then start saying, well, I guess it's just not God's will today. I'm sure they tried to go through the front door. I'm sure they tried to press their way through, but no one would let them in there. They were all interested in the miracle worker. The crowd wouldn't let them in. They probably maybe even went to one of the windows, but to no avail. I believe, though, that their minds were already made up. They just did not know how they were going to get about it. That's when, I don't know if it was all four of them collectively. I don't know if it was just one of them. I don't know if it was the guy laying on the mat who was wanting to join in in the pickup game of basketball at the local park. 
whoever said it said, you know what? Let's climb up on the roof. We'll just let them down that way. This is the kind of thinking that I want to have. Now, I am totally convinced and, and nothing can detour me or, or distract me from thinking this way. I am who God says I am, and that's, that's it. I am persuaded. Hebrews eleven thirteen 13 said, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them. They're thinking they were persuaded. They embraced them, and they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. I want that kind of thinking. I want to think that God has promises for me. So I need to go after them. You've got to be convinced. You've got to be sure that God has a plan. Don't live your life thinking that you can't. I've been limited my entire life by just the way that I was born. I could I could r- just crawl over into a corner someplace and play the victim if I wanted to. But I chose Thank God for the environment that I was raised in. Thank God for parents and influencers and and, and ministers and teachers that put their hand on my life and said, you don't have to be this way. My thinking had to shift. I am not, you'll never hear me say that I'm handicapped or disabled. I know categories, I probably should fall in those categories, but that's not who I am. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I've got purpose, and so do you. So what do you think? Let's go after it today, and let's believe that God has good things in store. Thank you for joining again. Hit us up at youtube.com forward slash at Darren Sargent Leadership. Watch this episode because I did a little thing. Also, remember our Marriage Matters podcast with the one and only Dewana Sargent and myself. I'm just the sidekick. She's the star. We're dropping another episode this week. Can't wait to share with you. Thanks for joining in. Have a blessed day. And remember, your thinking is important. God bless.